Hello. What you see here is uh, Arnold rendering <laughs> 3,000 objects, or maybe only 2,000 are in view. And uh, if I wanted to create a creative uh, video now, uh, I could add some music, but we're <laughs> in a technical world here, so I'll just uh, let it sit there like it is. Arnold is rendering MASH, and it does a wonderful job as always. You see it renders uh, depth of field and maybe you remember in one of my last tutorials about depth of field. Uh, it's a tricky and very lovely parameter in the camera setting. When you're in the camera setting go to the Arnold tab and don't use depth of field abbreviation is DOF. Uh, the don't use the depth of field, uh, which is uh, Maya generic, so to say. Go to the Arnold section and uh, choose the parameters there properly. Uh, and uh, I think I did it properly here with so many objects. And uh, Arnold still is rendering. It looks like as if the rendering would have sta stopped. But uh, on the bottom left, you see it's still rendering 2000 pixels wide and uh, the image actually is larger than this. This is the whole scope of the image and if you look at the lower left corner you see that all the objects poke outside to the outside. That's uh, how I made them in MASH using the Orient node and that's what this tutorial is going to be about. But I actually want to let it finish rendering so I skip forward and uh, it usually takes with this size of uh, image um, maybe 10 minutes or so. So we are approaching the final phase of this rendering. There are things been done down there in the corner. Probably up here now, yes. Oh, it's finished now. Nine minutes. Great. Nice to have you back and let's have a look at the scene now. We have two lights in the scene. One is the sky dome light which creates that bluish tint and an area light which is basically white and it's pretty bright and it sh uh, shines at the sphere objects uh, from the bottom. If I want to look at an individual individual object that's what they look like. I created them from what is called a poly super shape and it looks like this. I unhide it, it's sitting in the center of this scene now. It's basically a very simple uh, object which I created by right mouse clicking here and creating a, uh, a spherical harmonics object and modifying it. Actually I just simplified it. So it's a very lightweight uh, polygon object. That's what it is and it has a shader which you see here which is um, a ramp going from a pale yellow to a dark red. It's a view ramp mapping instead of a U ramp, ramp mapping uh, but it's not a proper m mapping anyway. I just did that very fast. What else do we have here? The mesh node. The mesh node has an orient uh, subnode here and it has no connected target and uh, it's just orienting to, to the center of the scene really. Plus the sphere in this case works on the mesh objects. The sphere is here. That's the sphere. They're all placed inside in the inner part of the uh, of the um, sphere because of their normal vector. And of course I created a camera panels perspective look through the camera here and that's the camera view I had for rendering. That's what you just saw in the render view and the camera setting here. There is the Arnold tab somewhere here. It's a perspective camera instead of an orthogonal camera and I enabled depth of field and uh, these are my settings of course your settings will be totally different 
because uh, you have other dimensions and you might uh, use another lens for example by the way I played with the focal length um, I put it to 25 I think the default is 35 so it's a wide angle lens here okay let's briefly do uh, something with the mesh orient option we create a very simple cone and we create a mesh from it go to the mesh tab and click here you have 10 of them now here they are and um, now I create a an orient mode from it and they all orient towards the center except for the first one and uh, well I don't know why that is but that's the way it is and uh, here you have aim target object uh, options the target is not connected it accepts a transform node which means it can be basically a lot of things it can be a light uh, which has a position in space it can be a mesh object of course and it can be a locator and uh, let's create a locator for that purpose I think we never created a locator in this series of tutorials the locators are sitting here where are they create a locator it's right here yeah uh, the locator sits here it's it's not being rendered it's just uh, an object which sits uh, in the scene and helps you achieve certain purposes like the orientation in this case let's go back to the mesh now uh, pick the orient node and this is the target that's where we want to pick uh, insert our locator one middle mouse button not left mouse button and we go here now we have the mesh connected um, and if we move the locator the cones will point in that direction that's basically what this node does of course you can use fall of objects now we have a fall of object section here let's scroll a little bit down uh, it accepts a mesh fall off that's what we do right mouse click create and now we have an object here and we, if we move it through the scene it's uh, activating or deactivating it's basically behaving like a gradient like a ramp which uh, uh, en enhances or diminishes the effect of the orient node I think all in all the original rendering I showed you was not so much relying on the orient node but on the mesh distribution on that gray sphere which I made invisible but uh, many more options uh, can be opened up uh, using the orient node if you need orientation and uh, I hope this inspires you to work with these nodes